So it's my last semester of school. My friends and I were in the back of the class clowning around like usual, and all of the people in the front were studying for the big exam later that day. Nothing out of the ordinary for us, but that day was going to be different. A new face walked in to teach our first morning class. He had a gray suit, black shoes, and something very shiny on his wrist. I thought it was a Rolex, but I couldn't tell. I was too far away. I could still hear him though, and he asked us a simple question. In 30 years, who do you think is going to be the richest person in this class. We all just laughed it off because we really didn't want to answer. You're not supposed to talk about money in the open, let alone how much we think our friends are going to be making. And honestly, we really didn't know how to answer. Money wasn't something that they taught us about in school, but he had a point. Someone was going to be the wealthiest person from our class. Of course, no one gave him an answer and the nervous laughter eventually disappeared. But then he said, I bet it's going to be someone in the back half of the room. My friends and I were laughing about as hard as we could when he said it, and as funny as the situation was, this guy was dead serious. Pretty sure that watch he had on was definitely a Rolex now. Imagine some guy you never met before, looking like a million dollars, telling the people working the hardest in the room they're going to be less rich than the other people. He is literally standing right in front of them saying this, and yes, the people in the front were definitely mad about it for the rest of the day. Some of them were even talking about it after the exam that afternoon. Oh, they were salty. Maybe some of your classes were like mine from this story where they were filled with people who wanted to learn, but some who took a more rigid approach naturally gravitated towards the front, and those who took a more relaxed approach gravitated towards the back. In any case, school tells us that being smart means you get all A's on your report card. But now that I've talked to thousands of people, friends and family as well, it's pretty obvious to me that there is more than one type of intelligence. Good grades do open doors and can provide opportunities if you have them, but it's not the end of the world if you're not a straight A student. For the purpose of this video, we're going to be using smart in the traditional sense. But some people are super creative and excel in the arts. Some people are naturally charismatic and funny, while others are exceptional at physical tasks and excel in sports. Some people can code and learn new languages with ease. We all have our own areas of excellence. There isn't just one kind of intelligence, and our educational system, in my experience, is largely based on memorization and repetition, not necessarily developing functional knowledge. Learn what you need to know, repeat it back, and get an A. The longer you can do that, the longer you can stay in school should you choose to. This is just part of why so many people that are considered smart in the traditional sense don't end up becoming super wealthy. We've been conditioned to think smart is just one narrow definition when it's clearly not. And the other part, well, smart people tend to spend a lot of time in school learning, but school usually doesn't teach us about money. And to make things even more concerning, there are numerous studies that say that being intelligent doesn't necessarily correlate to wealth. Don't worry though, smart people usually end up making a decent amount of money and figure out that all you have to do to make it is live below your means, invest the difference, and just a few decades later you'll end up with enough money to retire. So if it's so easy, why is it the data says some of the smartest people still aren't going to be at the top end of the money scale? There has to be more than this, and well there is. That's because smart people have three major obstacles to overcome in order to get wealthy, and not only am I going to tell you exactly what those things are, I'm going to show you what to do to overcome them and prove to you why doing those things makes you more money. Let's get started. Obstacle number one, smart people are risk averse. It's not your fault you're smart enough to see the dangers of investing, probably more than most people. If our ancestors weren't smart enough to see the dangers in their environment, well, they wouldn't be our ancestors. We humans are hardwired to avoid risk and play it safe because historically, it kept us alive. The problem with this is that in order to build wealth, we have to get our money to start making us more money, and this usually involves taking some risks, which again, our brains tell us us not to do. Well, this chart from NerdWallet shows us the average annual return of the S&P 500, and over all the time periods, returns range from 7 to 15% a year. So an option for building wealth for smart people is to invest money in the S&P 500, which most financial advisors, not me, I'm not one of those, would likely agree some exposure to this asset class historically has worked out for investors. Now, I know what you're thinking. Those returns are historical, and returns aren't guaranteed. Stocks are risky, and you could lose money. Right, you are, smart brain right you are. But I'd like to remind you that keeping your money as cash guarantees you lose money thanks to inflation at a typical rate of 2-3% to a year. So it's true that a savings account and bonds these days can get you a decent return, even outpace inflation. But remember, those rates are variable and even if you have a 5% interest rate and a 2% inflation rate, you're only profiting 3% for the year, which again, the S&P 500 beat. The only way to save up to a million dollars is by earning a million dollars and not spending 
spending any of it, but you could end up with a seven-figure portfolio by investing with much less money put in. Obstacle number two, smart people have trust issues. Look, when you're smart, you can usually do a lot of things and a lot of those things pretty well. The best part is that nobody has to tell you to do it. You're self-motivated and you get it done. You're the total package. You ever had a group project to work on and one person ended up doing most, if not all of the work? The problem is you're only one person and you're limited by your time. Let's say you decide to really make a go for it and start that side project. Eventually, you get it off the ground and it starts generating revenue. But how are you going to scale it? Okay, you quit your job and go all in. You're betting on yourself just like you always have. But eventually, burnout sets in and the whole thing comes crumbling apart. You could just, you know, hire someone to help you, but no one is going to do as good a job as me. And if something goes wrong, I'll have to fix it. And it's my name and money on the line. Easy, smart brain. You don't trust anyone because they're not you. But you at one point in time were a new employee somewhere. Someone showed you the ropes and you worked your way up from there. You do eventually need to trust other people so you can focus on the things that only you can do, which is usually the high level ideas and execution. The other tasks that can be delegated to other people can be given to them so you can focus on growing your money. Maybe it's not a full business you're running. Maybe you're considering something simple like hiring a financial advisor to walk you through the steps to where you want to be. Or in my case, like hiring a video editor for a YouTube channel down the line. If you're finding this video valuable, feel free to let me know by tapping the like button and consider subscribing for more. Either way, sometimes you got to open yourself up to other people and risk that they won't do a good job. But I'm confident eventually you will find that right person that you need to help you take some of the burden off of your plate and help you focus on moving up. But I know smart brain is telling you this isn't going to work. Well, let me ask you this. How many airline company CEOs do you think are flying the planes right now? Are the owners of Walmart checking out people at the register and restocking shelves? Didn't think so. Big business figured out that it takes a team to grow and that requires trust, accountability, and follow up when things go wrong. Sometimes smart brain doesn't want to let go, delegate, and manage. What smart brain doesn't realize is that we can't possibly work at all the Fortune 500 companies and drive shareholder value, but we're happy to buy their stock and sell for a profit, which comes from other people doing a good job. It's not fun to hear, but it is the truth. In order to get more wealth, you need to trust that other people are going to do their part. Obstacle number three, living the lifestyle you deserve. This is also known as a lifestyle creep and happens to a lot of people. Look, I get it. You worked hard. You deserve to enjoy your money. More specifically, the things that money can buy. And because you're smart, you get more responsibilities. This usually comes with a bigger and bigger paycheck, but usually comes with more stress too. It's easy to treat yourself to the nicer things in life, especially when the job gets harder and harder. The problem is that the money always seems to go to things that don't build wealth as you start to earn more and more. If your income increases, but so does your spending on material things rather than investments, you'll end up with a lot of stuff and nothing to live off of. You ever see those headlines about couples making hundreds of thousands of dollars and still feel like they don't ever have enough? They're almost always spending a ridiculous amount of the money they make. Smart people put themselves in a position to get paid well, but often end up getting trapped into spending more. For some reason, people just stop delaying gratitude when the money starts rolling in. It's not my decision what you do with your money, but I will ask you to consider what you want down the road. A bunch of things that lose value and meaning over time, or a sizable pool of retirement money, investments that can support a very comfortable lifestyle, and wealth that can be passed down to the next generation. Increasing your contributions to your investments will not only help you keep more of your money, but it will also help you grow your money faster since you ended up having more money to grow in the first place. The proof is simply just the math. Look at what happens if we invested $10,000 and got a 7% return for 30 years, and look at the difference if we just added $100 a month extra over that same time period. It's a difference of $100,000. So in summary, if you're smart, you are uniquely susceptible to making seriously costly financial mistakes. But if you take calculated risks when you can, learn to trust and work with the right people, and avoid lifestyle inflation, you'll have a way higher chance of being more successful financially. I recognize that this video might ruffle a few feathers, but I hope you can understand that I made this video with the intention that people who are smart enough to make a lot of money end up keeping more of their money. So if you appreciate that message, you might also appreciate this video where I talk about 10 things that schools should teach us about money, but they just don't. Be sure to check it out. I'll see you over there.